your sharp pain that was it was daily and it was also severe at about eight or nine you said you have a decrease by about how much percentage of a decrease in the severity of the pain 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent of the frequency decrease of the pain yes and 50 percent decrease in the severity of the pain yes right. you were getting up three to four times a night no one time a night and is it every night that you're up at one one time a night to go to the bathroom uh, not all there are nights that i can sleep all night all night you can sleep some yeah. nights some nights some all night. night and some nights only one time a night and there's more to fix with them but that's a great difference and is there any more leaky bladder condition no no more no disappeared during the night disappeared all day. yes hi i'm dr lani herman here uh, and i've got a patient with me this is Mr. Pereira, Pereira that's right. from Portugal, and he lives in Portugal with his family and flew across the North Atlantic Ocean to come to my clinic here in South Florida, uh, and uh, he was diagnosed with uh, familial amyloidosis. Familial uh, amyloidosis. Yes, it's, it's a severe uh, disease uh, that attacks the peripher peripheral nerves mm -hmm. um, and damages the, the nerves, and we f we feel uh, lots of pain in the foot, on the arms, uh, chest, uh, and sometimes on the stomach also. So the, so the chest pain, so chest the familial pain. amyloidosis, yes. they say it's a genetic, genetic condition. condition yeah. And your father had that as well? Yes. Or he, something he like that? He did see the yeah, amyloidosis. Uh, yes, he, he did uh, t uh, double liver, liver transplant. Liver but, transplant. Yeah, but, uh, it went wrong. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't work. So you know the fear that it, this is a condition that can actually take your life. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. And uh, the doctors, so and again, what you were saying was uh, foot pain, leg pain, chest pain, groin pain, yeah. arm pain, arm pain was there as well. As well. And uh, umbilical area pain you had yes, as well. and the bladder also. Too. And the bladder as well. So and we're gonna talk about something else with the bladder in just a moment. Uh, and so you were diagnosed with this was it eight years ago? Uh, eight years, yes. Eight years ago, and they put you on a medication. Medication, I'm taking Vandekel. Vandekel. Yes, uh, to stop the, the deposit of the, the protein mm -hmm. that the liver produces. They do. Yeah, so uh, did the doctors say that this medication, or uh, let me ask first, did you bring up to those doctors that you had the pain that was going on with yes, this condition? Yes, yes, yes. And did they say that that medicine was at the beginning, at the beginning, I didn't have pain with the medication, but afterwards, it, it, uh, I, I, I started to have uh, to have pain. The pain increased over time. To increase began over time. and yes, then increased, yes, progressed, and got worse yes. over time. Uh, that conducts to conducted to the weather problem. So when the weather changes, you notice that it. Yeah, it changed. It. The the pain got I'm, worse. Yes, if I go to the to the to the beach to the to take some sun and and, and water of, of, on, on on the beach, uh, it helps me a lot. Uh, it, I have uh, almost no pain mm -hmm. there. So incredible. Yes. So, uh, but still, the pain was getting pretty severe over the past yes. few years. Yes. And did you ask those doctors what? they could offer you to try to relieve yeah. the peripheral uh, nerve pain? The liver transplant. They told you <laughs> I, liver transplant. Yes, I don't want the liver transplant. Never want it. Uh, and and uh, they are working on other treatments, but... Uh, but nothing yet. No, it's real. Nothing yet. Uh, They're trying until, to do until some until research. That moment, no, no. Nothing right now. And so uh, one thing that you did was you changed your diet. diet so yes, you noticed more, that with dietary change, yeah, it, it decreased some greens, of the things. So. More greens. A lot of greens, juicing. Yeah, juicing. I do my workouts. I can do gym also. Mm -hmm. uh, I stopped running because uh, because of the because I changed the the, the food. That, uh, so I I do more weight weight and more gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still, it still progressed to get pretty severe, the pain. Yes. On a scale of zero to 10, before you started here, we're gonna talk about his progress yes. in just a moment. But before you came to my clinic, uh, you, uh, you found your pain was on a zero to 10 scale. 10 would be the worst pain. Yes. How bad was the pain when it eight, would happen? Eight, nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. And that was every day, eight or nine? Yes. Yeah. It, it started when I, I had, the, the, when I began to have the, the weather problem, it was during the morning and until until night. Mm -hmm. 
and tonight I have pain, severe mm-hmm. pain. Severe pain. And then it, and this pain was again, one more time, it was the peripheral nervous system, the leg, arm, chest, yes, uh, groin area, yes, uh, uh, foot, foot, yeah. and foot, and more particularly in the bladder mm-hmm. and in stomach, in, in the, the, the belly, the stomach, the lower uh, body, the, well, yeah, the bladder. So the bladder felt like, and this pain was an electrical impulse, like a shocking kind of pain, yeah, and burning, and burning, and burning, lots of yeah. burning. And was the and the burning both the shock and the burning at a level eight nine, in severity. The burning uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. Still very severe. Yeah. Yeah, very bad. And another uh, part of your condition, which started about August of last year and got worse by September October of 2018. Right now we're filming this video. Uh, his response to his first protocol is the reason why we're sharing this right now. Uh, we, this is uh, September 4th of 2019. So about a year ago in 2018, September of 2018 is pretty much about the time you started noticing you had, what did you call uh, it? it? It was uh, uh, burning legs, sensation on the chest. But the bladder condition, you the, noticed. The bladder, the bladder now. Well, back then, back then. In August, you noticed you started getting a yeah, leaky bladder. Yeah, leaky bladder. That's right, that's right. right leaky the leaky bladder. Uh, leaky and, and then, you uh, called it you called it neurogenic neurogenic uh, bladder right you called it a neurogenic bladder condition because yeah, it was a leaky bladder yes and the yes. doctors did you self-diagnose it as a neurogenic bladder or did the doctor call it neurogenic bladder condition uh, they told me that uh, problem from the the, the, the amyloidosis uh, from the amyloidosis from, yes it's so, a problem. It's so they a, said the amyloidosis the genetic condition, condition the amyloidosis does that also did that to your nervous system and that was yes. causing your bladder Control yes, problem. and the, 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 the one doctor told me that uh, I need to, to use, uh, to put something on, on the bladder to come out the, the, um, the to urinate, in order to urinate, uh, some, something in order to extract the, the, the urine. To extract the urine, but you were having a frequent urine loss. It wasn't like you couldn't. Yeah, but use. during the day, because I had, I had, uh, I, 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 you couldn't go in the daytime, in day. but you were leaking in bed at night. Yes, that was how you were actually started yeah, leaking, yeah. and you had to get up frequently. Because I slept and, and my system, the, the muscles relaxed, so I yeah. had to with the leaky. Got it. So it was that he couldn't go to pee in the daytime. The doctors maybe a catheter or something to yeah. put up in there to release the fluid. So he couldn't go in the daytime, but at nighttime he started leaking, and he actually had to get up how many times? You, you and your wife, three to four, three times. to four times every night getting up to go to the bathroom. That's so right. that interrupts the sleep. the sleep, that interrupts the energy because that makes you fatigue because you can't sleep throughout yeah, the night. Yeah, that's right. So that got you pretty worried. Yeah. Yeah. And then in addition to the genetic, I'm sorry, I'm not decreasing the serious thing, but it, it was pretty good. The whole disease, this uh, genetic disorder has was causing a progression of symptoms and getting yes. worse of yes, that's uh, right. the pain in the body and the bladder control. Bladder control. I, loss didn't, of bladder. I, I didn't have any control on the bladder. No control. And then also, if you could show the elbow, if you don't mind, yes. sharing here, if you could see the discoloration on this elbow and this one. So he had this uh, type of lesion, if you will, that uh, change in skin tone that's mm-hmm. even got an, it's like an open sore a bit. It's like a scabbed up dry uh, and loss of pigment you also had that on your right kneecap yes and now prior, now now it's gone now it's gone so this we can't see right now because the camera's not going to go that low but on the knee let me see let me just bring this down here yeah yeah on the knee right there yeah let me go a little bit lower now put yourself back go ahead and sit down again there we go okay so right now we look at that knee and you don't really see it on the knee but that was identical, you were saying before, to what was on your elbow, right? That's right. It was the same size as what was on the elbow before. Yes. Before we started. Yes, before we started. So right now, uh, after his first protocol, and your first protocol, we met back in April of 2019. Uh, April, yeah. yes. And you started that protocol, you did that at home. You also, upon my recommendation, a little shifting in the diet. And one more time, let me fix this. <laughs> we don't have that. Yeah. Let's just fix that. That's okay. And we changed a bit of the diet, and also you had a couple of root canals that I said that had to get pulled. And we had a dentist here assess you, and they were infected. They, they, they were infected. Yeah. Uh, two root canals infected. Uh, and you went back to Portugal? Yeah, and I went they, to Portugal, and they told me that, they told me that he, he couldn't find any, any infection. They found nothing wrong? Nothing wrong. Until? And I, but I insisted. 
oh, I have to take the two. I, I know that I, I, I did an exam. I need mm -hmm. to extract them. Mm -hmm. And I can only extract one if you want, but you have to sign the... Sign a waiver agree. Yeah. You agree. Yeah, and I said, okay, that's fine. And when so he, he took it, one. when he pulled the first one, he said, oh, okay, there's an infection in the root canal. If you, if, yeah, yeah, and I, I told him, and asked him, can I take the, the other one? He said, okay, yeah. it's better. If you want, yeah, yeah, I think it's better. So it's interesting. So, he, yeah, he took the second one, and they filmed, they, take, they, yeah. took, uh, they took photographs, etc. And uh, they found the, the, the teeth. The they teeth did a infected. severely inf infected. Severely infected. So yeah. those root canals were, I determined that those root canals, there was infection. I determined they had to go. The dentist I sent to here with a CAT scan, a CT scan of his jaw, said, yes, there's infection in there. Uh, the dentist, did they take a regular x-ray in Portugal? Or did they or just look in your mouth? They, they, take, they took a, a, a RX. Yes, yes or, so they looked in his mouth and they couldn't see it with that film, but with the yeah. CT scan it was seen and with my kind of testing I saw there was a problem with those teeth. So the dentist there pulled the teeth in Portugal and that once he pulled the first one he saw the infection that was on the tooth that wasn't able to be seen when the tooth was in his mouth by visual inspection and they couldn't see from the x-ray. Yeah, because, because it was in the root. It, it, it was in the root inside yeah. The, yeah. the cavity. Yeah. yeah, so once they took it out, you could see, and I have the teeth there right at the bottom of the root tip. It's, you could see the black looking infection in there. So that's great. And now let's talk about the improvement. Right now, your short pain that was, it was daily and it was also severe at about eight or nine. You said you have a decrease by about how much percentage of a decrease in the severity of the pain? 50 percent 50 percent and the frequency the amount of time or amount of days how decreased was that percentage wise? now i there are nights that i go i wake up only in the morning uh, and normally uh, one one in the morning in the in the in during the night in the 4 a.m mm -hmm. that's good and I, and I don't for have the pain, for the frequency of the pain. For, for, no, from the frequency of the urination. Well, well not the urine. I'm sorry. We're gonna, sorry. Let's stick with the pain for a minute. Okay. Let's okay. talk about the pain. Then the 50% yes. of the frequency decrease of the pain yes. and 50% decrease in the severity of the pain. Yes. Right. So the whole body pain has decreased dramatic for you. Dramatic, dramatically. Yes. yes. And you also, and that right, the knee spot is almost 100% gone. Gone, yes. Almost. almost. And now the leaky bladder. You were getting up. You were getting up three to four times a night. No, one time a night. And is it every night that you're up at one one time a night to go to the bathroom? Uh, not all. There are nights that I can sleep all night. All night you can sleep some yeah. nights. Some nights some all night. night and some nights only one time a night. And there's more to fix with them, but that's a great difference. And is there any more leaky bladder condition? No. No more? No. Disappeared during the night. Disappeared all day. Yes. So, slight change in diet uh, and the remedies to help clean up infections and toxins from his uh, parts of brain and other tissues of the body and the teeth pulling out these diseased uh, uh, root canals, which is not the only part of this, it is an important part, but now we've got a 50% decrease in the pain, a genetic disorder, genetic disorder that they said the peripheral nervous system what your wife just told me is what the medical doctors call it, almost like a multiple sclerosis of yes. the peripheral nervous system, yes, that's right? right. Yes. So a genetic disorder that is going to cause malfunction and loss of function of the body tissues. He's now after one protocol and the speed of recovery varies from person to person, but he is 50% less severity of the pain, 50% less frequency of the body pain, and he has the spots on the skin are starting to decrease or at least totally decrease just about 100% with that knee. And also this neurogenic bladder, leaky bladder, uh, he's not 100% better with that yet, but he can sleep through the whole night on most nights. He's up one time a night on, on, on some nights and he doesn't leak anymore. The leaking is totally gone, which is phenomenal. And so I'm gonna make another video about this if you don't mind if I could yes, about the yes. findings that yeah. and you came here because you were watching some of my videos just yes real, I watched real. one video of yours in YouTube and what went since what was different about what I was reporting than what um, I studied I, I did heard. some research mm -hmm. and when I saw your videos it, it, it made me sense something mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I know that something the chemicals that I had inside me uh, uh, pathogenic viruses and other things. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, I think it, it was that that causes the the, the that causes the, also the, the genetic uh, yeah. 
pain, the, the, the genetic problem. The genetic problem. To, to Turn the gene to, on, so yes, to speak. Yes, yes. So you believe in more of an epigenetics idea. Epigenetics. The environment, the makes, environment the, makes the gene, uh, the makes points, the cell malfunction. The, the food that we eat, yeah. uh, it's all, yeah. it's all matters. Yeah. Is there anything that you can share besides what you've already shared, and I totally appreciate you for doing this for people out there. Uh, is there anything that you can tell anybody who might be watching some of my videos like you did, who just yeah. says, you know, I don't know. I don't know if, if that man really knows what he's talking about or that man is doing the right thing. Or, or Is there anything that you can share? Yeah, I can share. You, you must uh, don't give up. Uh, you have to investigate. You have to do some research. And in order to, to ask, for help for for the doctors that really uh, knows what happens in uh, with the diseases in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we made a big difference here so far. Yeah. And you've been to other doctors. One more thing. You've been to other doctors. Part yeah, of the they time. are conventional medicine. More conventional. Yeah, more conventional. It's not the same. They 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 had the remedies, but they are conventional. They are, they are chemical chemical mm -hmm. uh, remedies. And they have pulled oh, the drug also. company. You mean the drugs, the, drug the company, medications? The yeah. medications. They have petroleum. They have other other things mm -hmm. in the medications. It causes it. It alleviates a little bit, but don't treat the causes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my understanding, yeah. my point of view. So, and what we're saying is, you got to pinpoint and safely remove the hidden disease-causing infections and toxins that made the body malfunction. Mm -hmm. And in epigenetics, uh, the science uh, is talking about how what these scientists have found is that they can remove the gene from the cell and the cell did not become diseased, it didn't get healthier, didn't behave any differently. They took the genetic code out of the human cell and it still functioned the same. They found that the environment is what made the cell become diseased. That's it. So infections, parasites, mold, fungus, viruses, mm -hmm. bacteria, and various chemicals, and even the electrical currents around us, electromagnetic field stress, cell phones, cell phone towers, and there's more about that topic I can discuss in another video. But these different environments, and even emotions, can drive the cell to become diseased and make the malfunction occur and make the disease develop. So. Um, uh, that's it about that. So there's going to be another video I'll put up here about the kinds of findings that I discovered with him, different kinds of infections and in specific tissues. I look forward to helping you. I believe we can help you get the job done to get out of pain and decrease the stress in your body. And you can watch other videos on my YouTube channel. There's many of these that I have up. I'm describing with a whole different way of looking at these disease conditions. Uh, and so I really thank you for watching this. I hope it was helpful. And uh, if you did find it beneficial, please share it with someone. Okay, and thank you too for sharing this. Okay. <laughs>